the Lucha Underground promotion. I definitely want to put a special RCWR show spotlight on this. I've been looking forward to talking about this promotion ever since I had first got wind of it. And I got to tell you, man, it looks freaking badass. That's what I got to tell you guys um, off the break. Now, some of these characters you may not be familiar with. And I'm telling you guys, as you watch more and more every single week, you'll definitely become more familiar uh, with a lot of these names. Uh, but off the break, we're introduced to Dario Guarda who is the promoter, the owner, the founder for the Lucha Underground promotion. And the way this episode had kicked off was he wanted to give $100,000 to the person that impressed him the most on this episode. Very first match we had saw, we had got Blue Demon Jr. defeating Chavo Guerrero. Meanwhile, we had saw a... I won't say a backstage segment because that's not really what it was. It was just more like a segment that just appeared after the match was over of Conan and Dario chatting. And Dario was talking about one Johnny Mundo, otherwise known as John Morrison, and how he's getting involved in the Lucha Underground promotion and that it's not about the respect, the tradition of... Uh, luchador wrestling and all that he just wants the fame and the money meanwhile conan was saying to him look i don't give a flying crap about all this other stuff that you're talking about the thing that i care about the most is money and you know honestly i've got my guy prince puma and i'm telling you he's gonna do some serious wonders for lucha underground he's definitely your man he can put Johnny Mundo in his place. And as far as Dario was concerned, hey, Puma had best put this man in his place because if not, he knows somebody that's coming to the promotion. And if things ain't going to be worked out before this person gets to the promotion, ain't no telling what's going to be going down once this cat arrives. So first question you're saying to yourself is, who is this person that Dario is talking about who is he alluding to you know from there we got our second match which was son of havoc losing oh no correction defeating sexy star i like the introductions they were doing for uh some of these wrestlers too in particular i loved how they had set up blue demon jr nice package for him uh nice package for sexy star english was broken but she did pretty damn good from there, we see another segment that had involved Dario and Chavo Guerrero talking. Dario pointing out to Chavo, hey man, you tapped out. You're supposed to be part of the legendary Guerrero family. What's going on right here? What would your grandfather think? What would your uncles think? And once again, he alluded to the fact that some person, some big person, big name, is coming to the Lucha Underground promotion. And when this person gets there, it's going to be a thousand deaths coming to maybe just about everybody involved in the promotion. From there, your main event match. Yes, only three matches, a one hour show. Well worth it though. Johnny Mundo, first time in three years that he wrestled, took on Prince Puma. It was a classic fucking encounter. I got to tell you, this match set the tone for what I think is going to be future episodes of Lucha Underground. What you can expect as far as the in-ring ability goes. I mean, all the matches were good, but I think everything that Lucha Underground is about could really be defined in this match between Johnny Mundo and Prince Puma. I mean, these guys, they put on a freaking clinic. I just found myself to be just amazed and marveled by everything that these guys were able to do in that ring. We had saw Johnny Mundo pick up the victory from there. Uh, we actually had saw Mundo and Puma get attacked. They got a serious beatdown by Homicide. 
former WWE superstar Ezekiel Jackson and a few other people. They would stand strong uh, with Dario as Dario had said, hey, what's going on with my promotion here? It doesn't just extend to Lucha Libre. Any and all are welcome here. So looks like no one had walked away with that money at the end and just the way that this show just really came about for a great debut i want to talk about the pros and the cons of this show all right first up let's talk about the pros first robert rodriguez mark burnett as executive producers for this show you should be very familiar with these guys names and if you aren't familiar with them then you know what google is your best friend you need to do some serious homework all right now as far as the style of it i mean it came off very gritty kind of dark but in a good way it was kind of like damn you know this is kind of nice you know it's kind of dark a little funky it's, it's got a nice little vibe to it but then also the camera angles i was really amazed at the different camera angles they were using to tell the story that was happening in the ring i was kind of like damn all right well this is kind of badass i like i like this this is kind of innovative as lucha underground that's all they kept trying to push in their press releases and interviews that they did of this promotion basically talking about how they're changing the game once again they're trying to be innovative they're trying to be fresh well they definitely had did that with this promotion i will admit that to the commentators matt striker vampiro superb job that these guys had did told great in-ring stories they gave you that great insight into the ring psychology um, right down to anything that wasn't picked up in the video packages that you were watching of these wrestlers and minded you're probably checking out these wrestlers for the very first time and you're like who are these people make me feel connected why should I give a damn about these performers? They did a really good job in selling that, I felt. And uh, I, I loved it. Now, some of these little segments that they did, I mean, they mixed in wrestling with, like, reality TV meets a drama, a dark drama. You know, maybe like The Shield or something like that. You know, those segments that they showed with Dario, Conan, Dario... Chavo Guerrero, you know, all those little ingredients right there. I kind of like how they try to escape the whole, okay, let's go to the backstage segment now where there's cameras standing by and all this other silly little shit. They just got away from all of that. Instead, it's, it's really story oriented. It's very story driven is what you're able to get right here. And, by it being so story driven is how you're really able to connect uh, to those wrestlers uh, that you're seeing or going to be seeing on a weekly basis. So I thought they really did a good job um, of that. If I were to maybe do a comparison of what this show reminds me of. All right. Bear with me for a minute here and just indulge me here. I'm trying to paint the right image for you guys that did not watch this show. Do you guys remember that TV series that had came about, oh, I want to say, was it around maybe 95? I think so. I think it ran from like 95 to 97, WMAC Masters. For those of you that don't remember that, uh, it was basically like a martial arts show. It had mixed in martial arts with like some type of a fantasy world type of setting where martial artists were competing for the ultimate prize which was the dragon star and the dragon star was basically this go trophy that was uh uh a little ninja star surrounded by a dragon or whatever it basically served as proof that whoever won that was the best martial artist in the world and Bruce Lee's daughter 
uh, was involved uh, in that. Shannon Lee, she was involved in that. She was one of the hosts, if I'm not mistaken. Well, Lucha Underground kind of has WMAC Masters meets Mortal Kombat, the series, all right, meets classic WWF superstars, all right? It just has all those ingredients to it meets, oh, I don't know, the shield or the wire. It just has all those elements mixed up in one. And you're kind of like, the hell? You know, only gripe I could make about this series right now is that when I look at a wrestling promotion like Ring of Honor, these guys are able to cram in there in just one hour, mind you. They're able to get in there at least four, sometimes five matches. And, you know, they really stretched it out here with just having three matches and one hour. But at the same time, they spent a lot of time on story, being very story driven and all that. Now, for some people that want really good storytelling to go along with their wrestling and how everything connects and why it makes sense. It may be good for you. You may like it. But if you're one of those type of fans that you really want to be entertained, you really want the wrestling, off this first episode, there really wasn't enough wrestling. I'm very curious to see what direction they're going to be going in on next week's episode and whether or not this is going to be the regular that we can expect, which is heavy on the story, and you get about three matches if you're lucky. But the key people I'm looking at right now that I would stress for you all to keep your eyes on is definitely going to be Johnny Mundo, Conan, Dario, Prince Puma, former WWE diva Maxine. She's now involved with that promotion as well. Uh, I want you guys to pay very close attention uh, to those names for sure and see how they do but if you had checked out the promotion i'd love to hear from you guys we'll definitely make sure we have this be an excerpt on our youtube channel and i feel that honestly this is a promotion i must say because i kicked back i watched it with my girlfriend and i'm like let's compare notes you know because it's been a while since she's watched a really good wrestling product she usually doesn't watch what I watch because she just doesn't like the direction that both promotions are going in right now. Of course, I'm talking about TNA and WWE. She doesn't like the direction that the promotions are going in right now. She actually enjoys the NXT product. She enjoys Ring of Honor. But when I sat her down and we started watching Lucha Underground, she was like, this is good. She was like, this is the best wrestling I've seen in months, you know. And uh, for her to say that, that really says a lot, I think. It says to me that Lucha Underground is definitely going in the right direction. I'm telling you, if they can continue to pick up great buzz and their ratings are good and everything, nothing but success for them to the point that maybe they can branch out to even more cable and satellite providers. As right now, to my knowledge, these guys are only available on... Um, Comcast and Direct TV. That's how you guys will be able to see new episodes on Wednesdays. Otherwise, you'll have to wait until Saturdays, 4 p.m. Eastern, on the Unama station. And that all is going to be in Spanish, uh, as far as I know. So good luck on trying to get the English translation. As the way it's looking right now, it's pretty much the only way you can catch new episodes. Um, if you're lucky, maybe there is a couple of YouTube uploaders that will try to upload the English version. If you can tolerate the visual quality, might not be on point. But other than that, uh, it's really the only way you can go about seeing these episodes right now. So make sure you check your local listings and all that. And like I had told you guys earlier in the week, I had a really great conversation with Chavo Guerrero about the promotion. And I could just hear the energy and the passion in his voice. This was something that he's really proud to be a part of. And uh, I tell you, it, it shows. It seems like everybody that's involved in this promotion, they're really behind it. They really love the concept. And I tell you, if it's a success, I'm sure many other promotions are going to be watching this and 
I tell you, the landscape of wrestling, it's possible that it may change because Lucha Underground, they have introduced some new elements to it, without a doubt, without a doubt. And for those of you that's not really familiar uh, with Prince Puma, I uh, just want to let you guys know, uh, he was wrestling in Dragon Gate. He's a former Open the Dream Gate open the brave gate open the twin gate and open the triangle gate champion and uh he also wrestled for the pro wrestling gorilla promotion all right and like we said he's currently wrestling right now uh as prince uh prince puma uh sexy star she's mainly been doing work down in triple a but you know now it's looking as though she's getting involved with uh lucha underground you already know about johnny mundo aka john morrison former WWE superstar Conan Conan has been involved in the business for three decades if you don't know Conan by now Google's your best friend I'm not gonna give you guys a long history lesson on that one and all that but check it out man it's definitely a great product it gets a pass from the RCWR show we are definitely going to be doing our best to do weekly reviews for that show